Christ has risen. Let us pray. God, thank you for gathering us together on this Sunday morning to hear your word proclaimed. With that word, strengthen us to go forth from this place out into the world to serve our family, to serve our friends, and to serve our neighbors and our strangers. God, we ask this in your name. Amen. I don't think I've ever met someone looking forward to Pentecost. Now, I know that doesn't make sense to think about it now, but considering the sermon last week, I thought I'd go with the unexpected. And so who looks forward to Pentecost? Show of hands. Anyone look forward to Pentecost? We got, we got one, two. Yeah. Why not? So we do have some people that look forward to Pentecost. Thanks be to God. Now, show of hands, who looks forward to Easter? Uh, everyone in the sanctuary looks forward to Easter. And I don't think that's hard to think about why, because if we think about the season before Easter, it's Lent. And it's not that Lent is a bad season. It's a wonderful season. But it's, it's about sin and death, and we can't say Alleluia for a whole 40 days. And so we end up sitting eagerly at the edge of our seats, counting down the days to Easter Sunday. And why wouldn't we? We look forward to celebrating the resurrection because it saves us, it comforts us, and it reminds us of the promise to come. But I do wonder why we have a tendency to stop looking past Easter and not eagerly await Pentecost too. When we look at our passage for today, like ourselves getting stuck in Easter, the disciples can't look past Good Friday, even though Mary has told them that Jesus came to her in the garden. In fact, they are so stuck in Good Friday that they have locked themselves inside. However, a locked door doesn't keep Jesus out. Instead, Jesus shows up anyway, and it's after he appears and he shows them the marks on his hands and in his side that the disciples rejoice at seeing Jesus, because Jesus has risen indeed. Now that they've moved past Good Friday, now that the disciples have celebrated their Easter Sunday, Jesus sends them out into the world breathes the Holy Spirit on them and instructs them that they can forgive or retain sins. Later, Thomas arrives and he will do the same thing that the rest of the disciples did to Mary, stuck in Good Friday until Jesus appears before him and shows him the wounds of the cross. And just one note, I think it's unfair to Thomas that we single him out just because John did. Because the disciples also struggled in believing the resurrection. But I think it begs the question to ask, what were the disciples afraid of? John makes it very clear that they are afraid of the Jewish leadership. They've locked themselves away out of fear of the Jews. But more importantly, if we consider what just happened Jesus has died at the hands of Rome. Jesus has died on the cross. So the disciples aren't just afraid of the Jews. They are afraid of pain, afraid of suffering, afraid of death. They are afraid of the cross because the cross has killed Jesus. So to avoid the cross, they locked themselves away from the Jews, away from the world. And that fear of the cross is so powerful, it prevents them from believing that Jesus is risen, even though the tomb is empty. Their fear of the cross prevents them from believing Mary's witness, even though she talked with Jesus in the garden. Even though Jesus had told them, this was going to happen. 
they are still afraid of what the cross has done and what the cross can still do. But Jesus has risen. And although the doors are locked, although the disciples locked themselves away from the world, Jesus still shows up. A locked door doesn't keep Jesus away. Jesus comes to the disciples to be the good news for them. And as a storyteller, I can only imagine how more shocking Jesus showing up might have been for them. They've they've locked themselves away and they're hiding away. And then Jesus appears before them. Scars and all. You can feel the silence in the room as Jesus begins to show them the scars on his hands and in his side. And it's only after Jesus has shown them that the cross has been defeated, that sin and death have been defeated, that eternal life with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit has been won. They rejoice at seeing Jesus. Jesus proves to the, to, to the disciples what we celebrated last Sunday. It is finished. It is finished, my friends. With that promise, Jesus makes the disciples fools for the cross. My friends, that is good news. And it is good news that the disciples gave to us. Look around. We're gathered together on a Sunday morning. Think about last week. We celebrated Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday. And yet we are still afraid. We are still afraid of what the news endlessly updates us on, whether it's another shooting the war in Ukraine, a new conflict in the Middle East, another pandemic variant, or what the economy might do next. And so once a week, we come here and we lock ourselves away from the world. We drive by those who need our help. We ignore helping those who we don't know because we just don't have the time. We place ourselves over the very people, the very neighbors Jesus commands us to love. And I don't think that's because we forget to believe in the cross. I think it's because we forget to believe in the Spirit. I think we sometimes forget that the gospel story, the church's story, our story does not stop at the resurrection, but goes further. When we go back to our text, Jesus doesn't stop at just showing them the resurrection. For them, Jesus goes further by giving them the Holy Spirit, making them fools for the Spirit. And by being fools for the Spirit, look at what they did. They went into the world to proclaim the gospel, heal the sick, free the oppressed, protect the weak, serve the poor. It is through the Holy Spirit the church became the church. And we experience the Holy Spirit today through the waters of our baptism, through hearing this word proclaimed. My friends, Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit now. And we can live out our mission now by sharing our gifts to show God's love. Through the Holy Spirit, we can praise God, increase our faith, step up, give generously, accept all, and help others. Christ has sent them. Christ has sent the disciples into the world. And now Christ continues sending us each week into the world with the Holy Spirit to be fools for the cross 
and fools for the Spirit. My friends, my Pisgah family, I encourage you this season of Easter to be comforted, to be healed, to be saved by that good news that we celebrate every Easter. It is finished. And I also encourage you to look forward to Pentecost and to what God invites us to do as fools for the cross and fools for the Spirit. Thanks be to God.